Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Libby Weed. I'm president of Gilbert and Sullivan Austin, and we are so pleased to be with you today. It's a pleasure to be at this splendid library, and we want to express our thanks to Dana Hendricks and her staff for making us feel so welcome and for planning such great events as you have here. You know, the citizens of Georgetown, at least in my mind, are famous for having good tastes and have being supporters of cultural arts, and I think this is one of the examples of that. I know that when we have our shows in Austin, we often have a lot of people from Georgetown. It's fun to see how many people come from Georgetown, and there are a lot of hints at uh, what great culture you have here. Well, today you're going to get a taste of the marvelous talent that we have at Gilbert and Sullivan Austin, the wonderful people who perform with us, and you'll be privileged to get a glimpse of a portion of a show that's going to be put on in June, June 14th through 24th, at the Worley Barton Theater at Brentwood Christian School. It's not a school production, but it's a school that has a marvelous theater. It's in far north Austin, so it's not really very far from here. So we hope some of you will make your way there. Uh, today, we have a radio mystery show. Now, there's something really special about a radio show. You get to use your imagination. Now, you'll see people, and you'll see them standing at the microphone, but you get to imagine a lot of things. And while you're imagining that, I want you to go a little deeper and imagine a big stage in a beautiful theater, luscious sets and costumes, terrific lighting, even more sound than we're going to have today, although we're going to have wonderful sound effects today, <laughs> and see if you don't want to come and see Redegor itself in June. But today, uh, I do want to mention, since we're getting really full here, that Dana says there are chairs upstairs. The view is not the best, but you'll be able to hear everything really well. So if there's anyone who comes in and can't find a place, we hope you'll take a place upstairs. I want to mention also that when this is over, we will have a reception with some light refreshments. And so we hope you can stay around for that. I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Radio Mystery Show. Thank you. Welcome to the GNS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm your host, David Kaufman, Major General at your service. It is said that witches' curses <laughs> and ghosts of those long gone are all figments of our imaginations. But are they? Follow along as we listen in on a conversation of such bizarre occurrences. Aye, but has your honor a heart that ups and looks you in the face and gives you quarter-deck orders that it's life and death to disobey? I have not a heart of that description, but I have a picture gallery. <laughs> that presumes to take that liberty. Well, Your Honor, it's like this. Your Honor had an elder brother. It had. Who should have inherited your title, and with it, its curse. Aye, but he died. Oh, Riven! He didn't. He did not. He didn't. On the contrary, he lives in this here very village under the name of Robin Oakapple, and he's a-going to marry Rose Maybud this very day. Our mystery was written by W.S. Gilbert, set to music by Arthur Sullivan, and stars... Patricia Combs as Dame Hannah, beloved adopted aunt of our heroine. Karina Browning as Rose Maybud, our sweet, beautiful heroine. Arthur DiBianca as Robin Oakapple, the hero of our story. <laughs> Danny Castillo as Richard Dauntless, heroic sailor and quite the ladies' man. 
Shelby Schisler as Mad Margaret, a wronged woman who still hopes. <laughs> Sam Johnson is Sir Despard Murgatroyd, our wicked villain, the bad baronet of Ruddigore. Julius Yorget, Sir Roderick Murgatroyd, deceased uncle of our current villain, and quite a scary ghost. <laughs> and also starring... <laughs> as our amazing chorus of ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back to begin our mystery shortly. But first, a word from our sponsors. When you have questions, where do you go for answers? In the future, no doubt, you'll have access to a personal computer. But until then, why not use the best modern major general, Encyclopedia? I am the very model of a modern major general. I think for mention vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical. From Marathon to Waterloo, in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations, both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. For my military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventurous, has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> to begin our story. The time is the early 1800s in the fishing village of Red Erring in Cornwall, where an endowed corps of professional bridesmaids is on duty every day. They are hoping that sweet Rose Maybud will marry, and so make use of them. But alas, Dame Hannah, who looks after Rose Maybud as she would a dear niece, says Rose is still heart-free, and then Dame Hannah tells them her own sad story. Many years ago, I was betrothed to a godlike youth who wooed me under an assumed name. But on the very day upon which our wedding was to have been celebrated, I discovered that he was no other than Sir Roderick Murgatroyd, one of the bad baronets of, of Rudigor, and uncle of the na man who now bears that title. As a son of that accursed race, he was no husband for an honest girl. So madly as I loved him, I left him then and there. He died but ten years since, but I never saw him again. But why should you not marry a bad baronet of... of Rodigore? All baronets are, are bad, but was he worse than other baronets? <laughs> My child, he was accursed. But who cursed him? Not you, I trust. The curse is on all his line and has been ever since the time of Sir Rupert, the first baronet. <laughs> Listen, and you shall hear the legend. Lord of Rudy. 
my God, despite his best endeavor, shall do one crime or more once every day forever. This doom he can't defy, however he may try. For should he stay his hand that day in torture, he will die. The prophecy came to each heir who held the title. Had every day to do some crime of import vital until with guilt or blood I'll say no more he cried and on the day he said that say in agony he died. maids leave and our heroine enters. She is good-mannered, virtuous though poor, and above all, beautiful. But before we meet her, let's hear from another one of our sponsors, who has the way to make every young lady into the heroine of her own story, simply by using Yum Yum's Day to Night Beautiful Face Powder. Yes, I am indeed beautiful. Sometimes I sit and wonder, in my artless way, why it is that I am so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. <laughs> Could this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. Back to our story. Remember, dear Dame Hannah is being greeted by the beautiful and sweet Rose Maybud. Dame Hannah wonders if there isn't at least one youth in the village who catches Rose's eye. And if there were such a one, verily, it would ill become me to tell him so. Nay, dear one, where true love is, there is little need of prim formality. Hush, dear aunt, for thy words pain me sorely. Hung in a plated dish cover to the knocker, of a workhouse door with not that I could call mine own save a change of baby linen and a book of etiquette. It is little wonder if I have always regarded that work as a voice from a parent's tomb. This hallowed volume. And here she is, producing a book of etiquette. Composed, if I may believe the title page, by no less an authority than the wife of a Lord Mayor, has been through life my guide and monitor. By its solemn precepts, I have learnt to test the moral worth of all who approach me. But is there not one among them who is faultless in thine eyes? For example, young Robin, he combines the manners of a Marquis with the morals of a Methodist. <laughs> Wouldst thou not love him? And even if I could, how should I confess it unto him? For lo, he is shy and saith not. 
As her beloved aunt leaves her, Robin Oakapple appears. Mistress Rose! Master Robin! I, I, I beg pardon. I, 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 I crave pardon. I, you, you were about to say? I would fain consult you. Truly? It is about a friend. In truth, I have a friend myself. Indeed? I mean, of course. <laughs> and I would fain consult you. About him? About her. <laughs> Let us consult one another. <laughs> Poor 
my little maid. Poor little man, now no. tell me, me pray and tell me true. What in the world should the young man do? If I were the youth, I should offer her my name. Hey, but her face is a sight for to see. If I were the maid, I should fan his honest flame. Hey, but he's bashful as a youth can be. If I were the youth, I should speak to her today. Hey, but she sickens as the days go by. If I were the maid, I should meet the lad halfway. For I really do believe that timid youth will die. Poor little man. Poor little maid. Poor little man, poor little maid, I thank you, miss, for your counsel too. I'll tell that you what he ought to do. Would there be some romantic intrigue developing between the lines? Perhaps our sponsor, Miss Buttercup, can provide us with her insight into this affair. Madam, what do you think of our story so far? Mm, I wonder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wondered if worries about possible bad breath could be inhibiting our lovely pair from getting together. I have just a cure for that. Pep Buttercup's pep perfect peppermint drops. I'm a poor little buttercup, poor little buttercup, though I could never tell why. But still I'm called a buttercup, poor little buttercup, sweet little buttercup. I've snuff and a tobacco and excellent a jerky. I've scissors and watches and knives. I've ribbons and laces to set off the faces of pretty young sweethearts and wives. I've treacle and toffee, I've tea and I've coffee, soft tommy and succulent chops. I've chickens and conies and pretty polonies and excellent peppermint drops. Then a buy of your buttercup, dear little buttercup, sailors should never be shy. So buy of your buttercup, poor little buttercup, come. Of your Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure with those peppermint drops, the lovers will find a way to get together. But for now, a new character is entering our story. I believe young Robin Oakapple has another brother, a foster brother. It appears he is a gallant sailor. Thank you. 
Regency in a revenue sloop and off Cape Finisterre. A merchantman we see, a Frenchman going free, so we made for the bold Mount Seer. Do you see? We made for the bold Mount Seer. But she proved to be a frigate and she up with her ports and our parts were 32. It come and come and near, but we answered with a cheer, which paralyzed the parley vous. Do you see? Which paralyzed the parley vous. Then our captain, he up and he says, says he, that chap we need not fear. We can take it if we like, she is certain for to strike, for she's only a darn mount seer, do you see? She's only a darn mount seer. But to fight a French fellow, it's a kitten of a cow. It's a lovely thing for to do. For we, with all our faults, were sturdy British salts, while she's only a poor parley -boo. do you see? While she's only a poor parley -boo. With our helm, and we scuff before the breeze as we give a compassionating cheer. Froggy answers with a shout as he sees us go about, which was grateful of the poor mounts here. You see, which was grateful of the poor mounts here. And I'll wager in their joy they kiss each other's cheek, which is what them fairners do. And they bless her lucky stars, we were hardy British stars who had pity on a poor Polyvoo. Do you see? Who had pity on a poor Robin and Richard share a joyous reunion, and Richard is surprised to learn that Robin is distressed because he loves Rose Maybud in vain. All the more surprising since Robin is a baronet. But Robin confides in Richard that in order to escape his family curse, he has assumed another name and let the curse fall to his younger brother, Despard. Richard agrees to help Robin win the love of Rose Maybud, since Richard is fearless when talking to the ladies. And where does this fellow get such confidence? Could it be from my Penzance pirate hair pomade? <laughs> <laughs> One pirate here Whose homely face And bad complexion Have caused All hope to disappear Of ever winning Maid's affection To such an one If such there be I swear by heaven's Arch above you If you By this made from me <laughs> however plain you be they'll love you however plain you be if you buy this pomade from me however plain you be they'll love you comes another character in our story. This poor madwoman is much in need of all kinds of help, but who will come to help her? Clock. 
Here she offers poor Mad Margaret a sad looking apple. <laughs> no, thank you. Tell me, are you mad? I? No. That is, I think not. Oh, that's well. Then you don't love Sir Despard de Murgatroyd. All oh, mad girls love him. I love him. I am poor Mad Margaret. Crazy Meg Poppin! <laughs> Thou lovest the bad baronet of Rodigor? Oh, horrible, too horrible. But see, they come, Sir Despard and his evil crew. <laughs> oh, hide, hide. They are all mad, quite mad. What makes you think that? Hush. They sing choruses in public. That's bad enough, I think. Go, hide away, or they will seize you. Hush. Quite softly, quite, quite softly. <laughs> and now enters Sir Despard Murgatroyd. Oh, why am I moody and sad? Confess. And why am I guiltily mad? Confess. Because I am thoroughly bad? Oh, yes. You'll see it at once in my face. Oh, why am I husky and hoarse? Oh, why? 
It's the workings of conscience, of course. Why, fine. And huskiness stands for a morse. Oh, my. At least it does so in my case. <laughs> when in crime one is fully employed, like you. your expression gets warped and destroyed. It do. It's a penalty none can avoid. How true. I once was a nice looking youth. But like stone from a strong catapult, I rushed at my terrible cult. That's nice. Observe the unpleasant result. That's nice. Indeed, I am telling the truth. Oh, innocent, happy, though poor. That's me. If I had been virtuous, I'm sure. Like me. I should be as nice looking as you're. Maybe. You are a very nice looking indeed. Oh, innocent, listen in time. We know. Avoid an existence of crime. Just so. Or you'll be as ugly as I'm. No, no. And now, if you please, we'll proceed. <laughs> oh, what a twisted plot this is. Young Robin is really the bad baronet in hiding. Sir Despard is thought to be the villain, but really should be able to live a blameless life. This is all one big mess. Who can straighten it out? Who can clean it up? <laughs> and when you find your home is in a mess. And so needs organization and cleaning. Who are you gonna call? Messbusters! That's us! Three Little Maids Cleaning Service. <laughs> done with a haunted picture gallery of cursed ancestors. Now that Robin's deception has been exposed, he must deal with the curse himself. For a week I have fulfilled my accursed doom. I have duly committed a crime a day. Not a great crime, I trust, but still, in the eyes of one as strictly regulated as I used to be, a crime. But will my ghostly ancestors be satisfied with what I have done? Or will they regard it as an unworthy subterfuge? Here Robin turns and addresses the ancestral portraits hanging in his hall. <laughs> oh, my forefathers, wallowers in blood. There came at last a day when, sick of crime, you, each and every, vowed to sin no more. And so in agony, called welcome death to free you from your cloying guiltiness. Let the sweet psalm of that repentant hour soften your long dead hearts and tune your souls to mercy on your poor posterity. And with that, Robin falls on his knees. Thank you. 
Well, with this chorus of ghosts entering our story, things get even more complicated. Here come Despard and Mad Margaret to confront Robin O'Capel. My brother, I still call you brother, you observe. You forget that you have been, in the eye of the law, a bad baronet <coughs> of Ruddigore <laughs> for ten years, and you are therefore responsible, in the eye of the law, for all the misdeeds committed by the unhappy gentleman who occupied your place. I say, bless my heart, I never thought of that. Was I very bad? Ten years. Think of all the atrocities you have committed, by attorney as it were, during that period. Remember how you trifled with this poor child's affections. <laughs> How you raised her hopes on high, don't cry, my love, only to trample them in the dust when they were at the very zenith of their fullness. Oh, fie, sir, fie. She trusted you. Did she? What a scoundrel I must have been. There, there, there. Don't cry, my dear. Here Margaret falls, sobbing on Robin's breast. <laughs> it's all right now. My eyes are fully open to my awful situation. I shall go at once to Roderick and make him an oration. I shall tell him I've recovered my forgotten moral senses and I don't get up and say penny for any consequences. Now I do not want to perish by the sword or by the dagger, but a martyr may indulge a little pardonable swagger and a word or two of compliment. My vanity would flatter, but I've got to die tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. 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 Matter, 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 matter. I should give you my advice upon the subject willy-nilly. I should show you in a moment how to grapple with the question, and you'd really be astonished at the force of my suggestion. On the subject, I shall write you a most valuable letter, full of excellent suggestions when I feel a little better. But at present, I'm afraid I am as mad as any hatter, so I'll keep them to myself, for my opinion doesn't matter. Her 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 opinion doesn't matter. If I had been so lucky as to have a steady brother who could talk to me as we are talking now to one another, who could give me good advice when he discovered I was erring, which is just a very favor which on you I am converting, my existence would have made a rather interesting little, and I might have lived and died of any decent little will. This particularly rapid, unintelligible pattern isn't generally heard, and if it is, it doesn't matter. 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 If it is,
and we have our production manager, Mr. Bill Hatcher. And any of them, or I, or we have a number of our board members here. Look for people, in fact, board members, you might stand up. They'll all have a little badge like this. Stand, board member. You can ask us questions. You can get more information about the show. And uh, you can get tickets at gilbertsullivan.org. It's that easy. I want to again thank the Georgetown Public Library and the citizens of Georgetown for making us so welcome. I'd like to say a special thanks to our co-scriptwriter and music arranger, June Julian. Please stand here. Our co-scriptwriter and director, uh, is that music arranger, Jeanette Jones. <laughs> music arranger and Jeanette is a director. Our accompanist extraordinary, Jean <laughs> Our sound effects, our in-house Foley, Bonnie Volkovich. Our videographer, David Little, back here in the back. Technician Robert Schneider, Thank you. sound engineer Alexandra Rubinek, and all of us are delighted to have been with you. It is a tradition of ours in Gilbert and Sullivan Austin when we conclude a musicale. Well, one to invite you to a light reception, and we will have a few refreshments that we hope you'll stay and enjoy with us. And two, we have two songs from the Gilbert and Sullivan repertoire that we like to sing at the end. The first one is Hail Poetry. It's from the Pirates of Penzance. And then finally, as we head toward our refreshments, from the Sorcerer, we sing Now to the Banquet We Press. Re uh, Regan Murdoch, who will be playing Old Adam in our Ruddigore production, will lead us in our closing numbers Please feel free to sing along or hum along. Ah, 